Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in the present day, there are very few reminders of the creatures who used to roam the earth, with some of the only relics being fossils, and the oil which we use to power our cars. But there are some species on earth today, that have survived since the dinosaurs roamed the earth, and these so called living fossils, are usually very well adapted, which is why they have been able to survive to the present day. But there aren't just living fossils on the land and in the skies, as there's actually plenty of fish that are known as living fossils, and there really are quite a few of them. But in today's video I will be going through 5 of these living fossil species, and if you want me to include any others, leave them down in the comments below. And for our first living fossil, we'll be heading over to the freshwaters of southern Canada and the northern USA, as we have the bowfin. Now the bowfin is personally one of my favourite fish, and one of the reasons I like them, is because they really are one of a kind. Because even though they look very similar to snakeheads, they are the sole surviving species of their order. And in the modern day, they can be found in heavily vegetated clear water swamps. And some of these waters can be stagnant and are normally very poorly oxygenated habitats. But just like many other primitive fish, the bowfin is able to breathe atmospheric oxygen, meaning that they're perfectly adapted to these habitats. And although they're limited to North America today, fossil deposits indicate amiforms were once widespread in both freshwater and marine environments, with a range that spanned across North and South America, Europe, Asia and Africa. Now bowfin are stalking ambush predators, and they typically do most of their hunting at night, where they move into shallow waters to feed on fish, crawfish, mollusks, and aquatic insects. And on this diet they can reach a very respectable 109 centimeters or around 43 inches. And by looking at some of these images, you may have noticed some of the bowfin's defensive adaptations, as not only do they have a very effective camouflage, but they also have an eye spot near the base of their tail. And this is a defensive adaptation seen in many other fish species, and it tricks predators into biting their tail instead of biting their head. And this adaptation might have been a lot more effective when it had more predators to worry about, as today the main predator of bowfin are other larger bowfin. But of course many people fish for this species, and unfortunately in recent times, many of them have been killed, as people think that they are the similarly looking northern snakehead, which is a problem invasive species. And when it comes to the mating season for the bowfin, the males get a very green underbelly, which is rarely seen in the fish world. And part of the reason why they have survived so long, is because they make very good parents. As the male will build a nest, and after the eggs are hatched, the male bowfin will protect the fry, and they're called a living fossil for a reason, as its family dates back 145 million years ago to the Jurassic period, when dinosaurs such as Allosaurus and Diplodocus were walking the earth, so in my opinion it's one of the most interesting fish in the world. But for our next species we'll be heading into the oceans, as we have the coelocanth. Now I say the coelocanth, but there's actually two coelocanth species alive today, the West Indian coelocanth and the Indonesian coelocanth. But for a very long time, coelocanths were thought to be extinct, as before 1938, they were thought to have gone extinct 65 million years ago in the Cretaceous period. But that was before a West Indian coelocanth was discovered off the coast of South Africa, and later on the Indonesian coelocanth was discovered in an Indonesian market in 1997, and eventually a live specimen was caught one year later. And one of the reasons why we went so long without seeing one of these fish, is because they're mostly nocturnal, and spend their days resting in caves. And one of the strange the things about the coelocanths are their four fleshy fins, and only the most primitive fish have these fleshy limbs, and they are known as lobed finned fish. And coelocanths mainly feed at the bottom of the ocean, normally feeding on fish and various cephalopods. And although that one time in history there were coelocanths all over the planet, their numbers are a lot smaller nowadays, as the West Indian coelocanth is stated as being critically endangered, whereas the Indonesian coelocanth is vulnerable. And the main problem that the coelocanths are facing is overfishing, as fishermen don't tend to target coelocanths directly, as they're known for not tasting very nice at all. But fishermen accidentally catch them when they're fishing for oil fish, which I featured in my poisonous fish video. But fishermen have been urged to put the coelocanths back in the water, or hand any dead specimens on to scientists. But coelocanths are known as one of the oldest living creatures on this planet, as they're known to have been around for at least 407 million years, and hopefully with a little help, they'll be on this planet for a few million years more. But for our next species, we'll be staying in the ocean, as we have sawfish. Now there are actually five living species of sawfish, and although they look like sharks, they are actually members of the ray family, and today they are found worldwide in tropical and subtropical regions. And when it comes to weapons in the animal kingdom, none of them 
really come close to the sawfish. And although it may look like they have teeth on their rostrum, these are actually modified scales. But unfortunately today, most sawfish species are either endangered or critically endangered, as their specialised weapon also gets them in a lot of trouble, as they're known to easily get caught up in fishing nets and then eventually drown. But unfortunately they are also hunted for their fins, for both the shark fin soup trade and for parts of traditional medicine, and their only real remaining strongholds are in northern Australia and Florida. And if you manage to see a full grown specimen, you're not likely to forget it, as they are some of the largest fish in the world, with some species reaching a length of around 7.6 metres, or around 25 feet. And although they have an intimidating appearance, they are generally harmless to humans, but can inflict serious injuries when captured or when defending themselves. And like many other predatory marine fish, the sawfish has electroreceptors which help it find its prey, and these sensory organs are normally all the way along the rostrum. And this helps them detect their prey which is normally crustaceans and mollusks, before thrashing their rostrum around, making them easier to eat. And as their numbers are dwindling in the wild, it is illegal to buy or sell any part of a sawfish in the USA. And if you are lucky enough to see a sawfish in the wild, you can help out conservation efforts by reporting your encounters with the sawfish. And sawfish and their ancestors are thought to have been on this planet for around 56 million years, which dates back to the Eocene period. And although not directly related, a very similarly looking species was thought to have been preyed upon by Spinosaurus. So although the future doesn't look bright for the sawfish species, they have survived a very long time. Our next group of prehistoric fish are the gars. Now there are seven species of gar still alive today, and they can be found in North America, Central America, Cuba, and the Caribbean. And in the wild, gars are apex predators, normally feeding on other fish and aquatic invertebrates. And they really do have some nasty weaponry to deal with these prey items. But the main reason that they have survived so long is that they're highly adaptable fish. As just like the bowfin, they can breathe atmospheric oxygen, meaning that they can live in very oxygen poor conditions. As well as this, they have very thick scales, which make them very hard to penetrate, with only really alligators, which are living fossils in their own right, being able to puncture their scales. And although they don't make the best of parents, they do have a little trick to make sure that their fry will hatch safely. As guard themselves are not toxic, but their eggs are, meaning that most would-be predators leave them alone. And today the largest species, the alligator gar, is thought to reach sizes of around 3 meters and 9.8 feet, making them one of the largest freshwater fish in the world. And although they're mainly found in North and Central America today, fossilized gars have been found in Europe, India, and South America. And fossils from this order have been known to date back to the late Jurassic, around 145 million years ago. So out of all the prehistoric fish I've featured so far, the gars are probably the most popular. But for our next living fossil, we'll be heading over to the freshwaters of Africa, as we have the Baishas. Now Baishas are some of the most diverse living fossils, and in the modern day, they're normally found in swampy, heavily vegetated waters. And just like the gars and the bowfin, they're able to breathe atmospheric oxygen. And although they're active in the day, they tend to be most active at night, feeding on small invertebrates, crustaceans, and insects. And to find these food items in the dark, they use their excellent sense of smell, as they rarely, if ever, use their sight to find their prey. And feeding on this diet, the largest species of baisha is thought to reach a maximum size of around a meter or 39 inches. And although most baisha species have stable populations in the wild, they are quite vulnerable, as habitat destruction due to agricultural and urban development have really put a dent in their numbers. But I'd back the Baisha to be on this planet a lot longer, as Baisha fossils date back to at least 250 million years ago, to the Triassic period, so hopefully we'll see their numbers grow in the future. But that's about it for this video. As I said at the start, there are plenty of prehistoric fish still alive today, so if you want to see me feature any of them, leave them down in the comments below, and I'm sure I'll get around to them at some point. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. And until next time, goodbye.